Hey CTM students, Mr. Wagner here with Lesson 8.4 with a special guest to help introduce the lesson for me today. Hey, how you doing? I'm Sheriff. That's what they call me, Sheriff. This is Lesson 8.4. This is what you're going to learn about, some vocabulary there. And make sure you use those extra examples. If you don't use them, I may have to come and arrest you. Seriously. Thank you, Sheriff. Okay, we are moving on. A little, little cold there, aren't you, Sheriff? No, it's just, just who I am. It's just how I talk. Okay, okay. Uh, I think I'll take it from here. Thanks, Sheriff. Are you sure about that? I'm not sure you can do this very well. No, I'm, I'm good. Okay, thanks. Thanks, buddy. Did you just call me buddy? Yeah, I, I did. Sorry. It's okay. I'll give you one. One mistake. Okay, anyways. Let's work on the actual lesson now. Dimensional analysis is this. This is a big thing that we're doing here. In, uh, in this lesson, we are converting. This is the big thing we're doing in this lesson. The, the main thing we're converting two different units of measurement. So we're going to be given something in a certain unit or units and we'll have to convert it to a different set of units. And then a unit fraction, you've done stuff with unit fractions in your life before or should have if you were doing things correctly at least in your algebra class and your, your geometry class and your science classes you may not have known that that's what it's called though or that's what you can call it so a unit fraction is a fraction where the numerator that's the top part of the fraction the numerator and denominator denominator is the bottom part of the fraction contain different units yet the value of the fraction is 1 and so what I mean by that, or what do I mean by that? So for example, we could say one foot, well that's the same thing as 12 inches. So if I said one foot over 12 inches, that's equivalent to that. So this would be like one right here. You could also say we, we know 100 centimeters is the same thing as one meter. So that would be another unit fraction. Could I flip flop these? Could I put 12 on the top, 12 inches and one foot on the bottom? Sure could. Same thing here, I could put one meter and 100 centimeters on the opposite parts of the fraction, or on the, the flipped parts of the fraction, and this list goes on and on and on. So we could have a lot more than that, but that's a, a good start right there. So a couple of unit fractions, and then in here, make a little table like this. We are going to put in here US customary unit conversions. And then your book has this on uh, on page page 458. Uh, but I split it up into four different parts here because there's kind of four different types of measurement basically that you got to know. So this is a table that you should already have memorized, honestly. Uh, but if you don't have it memorized yet, not all of them maybe, then you need to memorize the ones you don't already know. So one foot is 12 inches, one yard is three feet. That would mean one yard would be three times 12, which would be 36 inches. Think of it like that. And one mile, expect you to know this. It's an odd, or a strange number. It's actually an even number, but it's kind of odd, I think. That one mile is 5,280 feet. But that's what it is. Where they came up with that? I'm not sure. Are you sure, Sheriff? 
No, I have no idea. Uh, yeah, I didn't think you did. Um, why'd you take your glasses off? The, why'd you take your glasses off? I have no idea what you're talking about. Wow, this guy is something else, isn't he? Uh, so one pound, 16 ounces, that's something you should know, something you need to know. And one ton, in U.S. customary, we don't spell it with the N-E in U.S. customary measurements, one ton is 2,000 pounds. Uh, right now we're not using any abbreviations, but there are abbreviations for all of these things that we can use. Uh, and then over here, we're going to put down here one cup. This is more of a, or it is a liquid measurement that equals eight fluid ounces one pint is two cups so in other words one pint is two times eight that would be eight, 16 fluid ounces uh, one pint would be 16 fluid ounces, that's another way to think of it. One quart is two pints. So if you did one quart and wanted to change the ounces, you do two times two times eight, it will give you 32 ounces. And then one gallon is four quarts. So if four quarts, one quart is 32 ounces, like we just said, four quarts would be one gallon. Uh, that would be 128 ounces, but we'll get to that stuff later. That's that's not something I have expect you to have memorized that a gallon is 128 ounces, but I do expect you to know these four things, and you could derive that from the information there. And then some things with time. We definitely should know all these things already. One minute is 60 seconds, though. <coughs> One hour is 60 minutes. So if you were asked how many seconds are in, oops, how many seconds are in, that them a little better, there we go, how many seconds are in an hour, you could just do 60 times 60 and get 3600. Uh, one day is 24 hours. And then for the purposes of, of this class, we're going to say one year is 365. You should know about leap years, I hope 365 days, but leap years, there's actually, if you if you look it up online, you can uh, read a lot more about it and find out that, okay, for a leap year, we include that, uh, generally we define a year as either 365 days, 365.25 days, if we think about the leap year, but for the purposes of this class, we're going to just say 365. Uh, and you can get even more technical. You can look at stuff like this and say, oh, it's 365.24219 days and so on and so forth. And, and you can get really, really picky about things because it's, the year is based on how many days it takes for the sun or for the earth to go around the sun. And it's not exactly 365 days. It's not exactly even 365.25 days. Uh, there's some slight little variations off of that. But we're just going to say 365. Okay. So let's do some examples here. Let's start off with a pretty simple one. 147 inches equals, I want to know how many feet that is. So I'm going to put question mark feet. That's my, my uh, problem here. What's the question mark? What can I fill that in with? So let me show you. Let me go back here to, we're doing these things, dimensional analysis. We're going to convert to different units of measurement. And we're going to use some unit fractions here so that we can do that conversion. So I think the easiest way to do a problem like this is just to rewrite down what you're trying to convert, make it a fraction, put it over 1, and then just multiply by what you need to to get rid of the inches. We want to change inches to feet. To do that, we're going to make a unit fraction. So this is like multiplying by 1 whenever we're multiplying by unit fractions. So it's not really changing the uh, what's there it's just going to change the units the numbers will change because you're, you're changing the units what's going to go on the bottom though should I do like I had here one foot over 12 inches or should I do 12 inches over one foot that's a good question 
And it all depends on where the units are that you want to get rid of. So I want to get rid of inches. So if inches is on the top, I better write it on the bottom because that will then cancel here. So I'm going to cancel out inches and inches. What am I talking about? What do I want to change it to? I want to change it to feet. So it's one foot over 12 inches. This is a unit fraction. This is just like multiplying by one, but it's going to change the units now. So what do I have on the top? I've got 147 times one on the top. That's just 147. On the bottom, I have one times 12, which is just 12. And then this is 147. I still have feet out here. So I'm going to put feet on the top like that. And now if I reduce this, this can be reduced to, if you, if you kept it as a, a mixed number, 12 goes in 147, 12 whole times, and you have three left over. So you could say 12 and 3 twelfths feet. We would want to reduce that to, though to 12 and 1 quarter feet. Or you could say, if you're doing decimals instead, 12.25 feet. Now if you're saying this was in feet and inches, if you wanted to say it like that, this would be 12 feet with 3 inches left over. So you could even say 12 feet and 3 inches if that was allowed. This is just a, a foot ruler over here and each 1, 2, 3, each, each number here represents 1 inch. Uh, so just a something you've probably seen before, but just a kind of a quick reminder as to what a foot is and that there's 12 inches in a foot. All right, let's do example two here. This is something from Thailand, actually. So in 2008, I went to Thailand, and this was more or less true. The exchange rate changed slightly every day, um, but we're gonna say we're gonna go with this number, a dollar. So a U.S. dollar could be exchanged. for about 32.88 and their currency over there it's not called a dollar it's called bot so b h a t uh, so we're pretending like we're in thailand right now and things are sold in bot so you look at this picture this is sold right here in bot 3000 bot it says and so this is thailand so let's make a little note of that cuz you might not remember that you look at your notes later. So this is Thailand's currency. Let's just write that next to there. So 332.88 baht. And back then, you're going to fill in the question mark here again. Back then, 3,000 baht. Why am I interested in that particular number? This was on sale for 3,000 baht. And I was interested in not uh, buying this thing, but I wanted to know, is this a, a fair price? Because I think in dollars usually, that's how my mind works, so that's what I'm used to. And I'm not used to thinking in bot, so I was saying this is going to be, I'm saying approximately how much, because I am going to round some stuff off here a little bit, most likely. Uh, so this is about, question mark, dollars I'll put. So I want to fill that in right there. So let's figure out what the question mark actually is. So again, start off with with what you've got. I've got 3,000 baht. And then put that as a fraction, put that over one, and then multiply it by a unit fraction. Whatever the unit fraction is that will get rid of the units you don't want anymore and make it so that you have the units you do want, which is dollars now, that's what we want to do. So the unit fraction should be I should put bot on the bottom because I want to get rid of that. It's on the top here. So if it's on the top here and the bottom here, they will cross cancel each other. And so this would be 32.88 bot, and that was $1. So $1, 32.88 bot, same thing. It's a unit fraction because they equal each other. So if I multiply this through, I've got 3,000 times 1. That's just 3,000. So that would be $3,000 now on the top, divided by, and then 1 times 32.88 on the bottom. At that point, I would take out my calculator, and I would actually work that out. So let's see what we get. This, whoa, 
Nope, nope, nope. 32. No. <laughs> Sometimes it gets that extra zero. I don't want that extra zero. Divided by 32.88 is so about this much money. So technically, I should be putting an approximately equal to symbol here and even over here because this is this is approximate. This is rounded off a little bit. Uh, they can continue that decimal going on for a long time. But this divided by this was about we're going to go with two decimal places for right now ninety one dollars and twenty four cents let me just check the rounding of that one more time yep that was a zero there so that's definitely going to round down to that so this picture i was trying to decide is this worth three thousand baht in other words is it worth ninety one dollars and twenty four cents ish to me that was just an approximate thing so it kind of fluctuated uh, being worth ninety to a hundred dollars was it worth that to me it was and I bought it and I'm gonna bring that in if I remember I'm gonna bring this in this picture on uh, the day we have these notes due and you're gonna see why you're gonna find out why I paid that much for this picture I think it's a pretty cool picture as it is but once you find out a little bit more about it you're gonna be like what? what son? what? what did you say? Uh, this picture over here, I'm keeping this one hidden. I'm going to show you the uh, the special thing about this picture later on. So I'm going to pull that picture out, but not right now. You're just going to have to wait. I'm sorry. Uh, so example three. Let's check out this one. And honestly, I have no idea why this is here. I don't remember. No, I have no idea. None at all. Isn't that right, Sheriff? He's a liar. He lies all the time. Thank you again, Sheriff, for your wonderful insight. So, 25 feet per second, he, he's a liar. That guy, Sheriff, doesn't know what he's talking about. Okay, question mark miles per hour. So, I want to now change 25 feet per second into miles per hour. So you're traveling 25 feet each second. What is that converted to miles per hour? So this one we've got two units now. We're trying to convert them both at the same time basically. So a little trickier here, but I don't think really that much harder. So this is 25 feet in one second. In other words, we're trying to change this so that it says miles per hour. So I'm going to multiply by a unit fraction, I want to get rid of seconds. I don't want to change seconds into hours instead. So this is something we should know already. We know that there's 60 seconds in a minute, so where should I put seconds? Do I want to put it on the top or the bottom? I want to get rid of it. I want to get rid of seconds, so I'm going to put that on the top and put minutes on the bottom. So I'm going to put 60 seconds, not 60 minutes. That would be one minute. So this is a unit fraction now. That and that are equal to each other and that will get rid of the seconds that's one thing I wanted to get rid of how about the minutes now I don't want minutes either I want hours so I'm going to multiply this again a similar way similar idea minutes going on the top that'll cancel and then now hours going on the bottom that's one hour to 60 minutes and then finally I want to get feet and change that to miles you know remember how many feet were in a mile go back to your table which eventually needs to be memorized or needs to be memorized before the test date so this is 5,280 so what should I put on the top here I've got feet on the top so I should put feet here on the bottom I should put miles abbreviated like that on the top so this is 5280 and this was one so these two are equivalent feet will cancel this way and I'm left with now I'm just going to make sense of what I have here. So this equals 25 times 60 times 60. And then the times one part, I'll leave that out. Don't really need to think about that. And I have 1 times 1 times 1 times 5,280. That's just 5,280. We just need to figure out what units are still left here. So miles are left here and hours are left here, which is what I wanted in the first place. So miles per hour, that's good. This this works out too. If you get out a calculator, 
I'll just let you know that I did the work for that already. You can double check and verify me to make sure that I didn't make a mistake there. But this would be about 17.04 miles per hour. So now maybe this makes a little more sense why I picked the bicycle because a lot of bikes you might average that kind of speed, especially if it's a road bike, you can go a little faster on those. Uh, you can get cruising pretty good on those 20, 25 miles an hour without too much trouble. So I don't think 17 miles an hour would be too hard to keep up. So 25 feet per second is about 17.04, 17 ish miles per hour. Uh, so from here, now we are going to start looking at some conversions going from US customary measurements to the metric system. So before it was just US customary to another US customary. Now it's US customary to the metric system. Do I expect you to memorize all these things? No, I do not. This is a table that I will give you on the test. So don't worry about trying to memorize all these. Wouldn't expect you to do that. But do I expect you to have these ones memorized right here? Absolutely. These ones, most of these you should know already by this point in your life. Um, but the ones you don't, you need to, to work on getting those memorized. Okay, so we're just going to refer back to this table as we complete our other examples in this lesson. So let's hopefully learn some stuff beyond math as we go. Uh, that's always my objective here is to kind of infuse different things within the math lesson so that it's not not what you might think just a boring math lesson or something like that but that you actually hopefully enjoy it a little bit and, and learn something new beyond math as well so the world record in the high jump in the high jump is currently this guy holds it he said it in 1993 actually so it's held for a, a pretty long time um, almost 20 years at this point that dates this video but yes that's, that's uh, at least at this point what the world record is. So 2.45 meters. Most of the things in uh, track and field internationally are measured in meters and so that's the official record in meters. What is this height though? What is this height in feet? Because most people in the US you tell them 2.45 meters and they'll just give you They'll give you a look like, hey Sheriff, come back here a second. They'll give you a look like, like Sheriff does. He's pretty good at it. I don't understand what you mean. 2.45 meters doesn't make any sense to me. Yes, I, n I know, because you're a U.S. Sheriff and you don't understand these things. Okay. So the world record high jump is this. How can I change that to feet? So I'm going to go back to my table here. Where's the one that changes feet to meters? Is there one? Uh, so there isn't one directly like that, but we can use the fact that the fact that uh, 0.9 meters is about one yard. These these are all technically these kind of should be approximately equal to the symbols because they don't exactly equal this. And some of these are better estimates than others. Honestly, I will kind of talk about that as we go here. But this one to this one, I could use that, and I could also use the fact that three feet is the same as one yard because I want to change meters to feet but I just have a meters to yard conversion right here so I'm going to be doing those things and it will should make it pretty easy uh, so this will say 2.45 meters let's make it a fraction and put it over one we're going to multiply this by I want to get rid of meters eventually I want to get feet instead of the meters here so to get rid of meters it looks like my unit fraction now can be this was one meter is the same as, um, let's go back there, not one meter, this is 0.9 meters is the same as one yard. So I gotta erase a couple things there. 0.9 meters, there we go. Same as one yard according to this table here. And then we know that we'll get rid of the meters. I wanna get rid of yards now too. I want, instead of yards, I want feet. So what's the height in feet here? So yard change that to feet. How can I change that to feet? I can write here there are there is one yard to every three feet. So now yards will cancel like that and I'm left with let's 
just make sense of that. 2.45 times 3, and I have feet on the top. On the bottom, I have 1 times 0.9 times 1. That's just 0.9. And so we work this out, 2.45 times 3, and then divide that by 0.9. I'll take out my calculator and, and just show you how that works in case you're wondering how does that work. So we would have to do this times this first and then divide by that. So I'm just going to do 2.45 times 3. That is 7.35 and then divide that by 0.9. Oh my goodness. Think about that for a second. What is this? What is the units? This is 8.17. World record for the high jump is about this many feet. So it's about 8 feet if you were around to that, around that to the nearest foot. Now, the book uses 0.9 meters equal to one yard and I don't think really that's a great approximation and as you can see here one yard is actually 0.9144 meters that would be a much better approximation so just for argument's sake I'm gonna type in 0.9144 instead and see what I would get instead so 2.45 times 3 is 7.35 again divide that by 0.9144 and then this would be a much better answer 8.038 and so on so this is actually what it would be in feet if we we're gonna use the the best approximation this would be a much better answer so it's actually a little less than this 8.17 feet is a little too high but it's about 8 feet it's just over 8 feet uh, so, so this guy yes this guy jumped over a bar like this that was higher than eight feet in the air and he's the only guy to ever jump over as far as I know he's the only guy to ever jump over something that was that high he's from Cuba uh, his name was or his name is Javier Sotomayor uh, from Cuba said it in 1993 I uh, I've done some high jumping myself I did a decathlon for a year back in college but uh, wasn't even close to something like that. Eight feet. That is insane. All right. So this one going to be. Uh, I hope you're finding this stuff really practical. Uh, this one's going to be a very practical problem. Uh, is that me? No, that's Wag Daddy. That's somebody entirely different. Uh, but Wag Daddy is at a water cache. This is a water cache, an example of a water cache on the PCT, stands for Pacific Crest Trail. Uh, probably the most amazing trail in the world, honestly. Uh, I, I think it's phenomenal. And he can carry up to 8 liters with him. So this was true when I was, uh, what am I talking about? When Wag Daddy was hiking, my, my friend, when he was hiking, he carried this thing called a platypus. Uh, and it wasn't a, an animal platypus, but it held six liters of water. And then he had two other single liter bottles. So he could carry up to eight liters with him. Uh, there are, this is another, let's assume that a lot of these were empty. And there are 1.5 gallons at the water cache how many liters is this and then I'm going to add another question here too also if he drinks one liter for every three miles he hikes. And has 21 miles. This wasn't all that uncommon I've heard from Wag Daddy. He, uh, he said that often there would be like these 20 to 30 mile waterless stretches. You have to carry 
water for that far. Uh, so it has 21 miles to the next water. Will he have enough? Okay, so let's do the first question first. So 1.5 gallons of the water cash, how many liters is this? So let's figure that out first here, 1.5 gallons. Basically write down what you got to start and then we want to do our unit fractions to, to try to change it into what we want instead. So I want to change gallons to liters. I want to do that and so I'm going to go back to my conversion table back here. What's the gallons to liters conversion? Gallons is about 3.8 liters it says. So all I need to do here is figure out, okay, what do I want to put on the bottom? I want to put gallons on the bottom because I want that to go away. And I want to put liters then on the top cursive L for that. And it's 3.8 liters to one gallon was our conversion there. Again, this is rounded off maybe a little bit more than I would like, but we're going to use what the book has for that. So this is going to equal, that will give me the thing in, in liters. This is 1.5 times 3.8 on the top. This is a step you could leave out in the future, but write it down for right now. So this over 1, do 1 1.5 times 5.8, or 3.8, excuse me, and you get 5.7 liters. You notice I kind of stopped doing the approximately equal to symbol. Hopefully you're realizing that though. This is approximately equal to, approximately equal to. Our book doesn't use the approximately equal to symbols there, so I'm kind of leaving it out here too. So this is answering the first question, 5.7 liters. So definitely have enough space to, uh, to carry that much. I can carry up to eight liters. And so let's say now we're ans answering this other question, drinking one liter for every three miles. So I drink one liter right on the spot, right at the water catch. And then every three miles after that, I still keep drinking. So that's gonna be if we take 21 and divide it by three, I drink right on the spot. And then every three miles after that, that's how many liters I'd be drinking. So that would be seven liters that I would need. So seven liters. I keep saying I, I, I'm not sure why I keep saying I, because um, I'm talking about Wag Daddy here, but seven liters would be needed. So that doesn't answer the question. The question is, will he have enough? So you're able to carry 5.7 liters, but you need seven liters to drink. Is that gonna be enough? Not quite. So. I would say not enough water. Even if you could drink that first liter right away, you still need six liters, which you wouldn't quite have enough. So you might be a little bit thirsty. You're probably going to survive. Um, but if there was a another water cache in between there unexpectedly popped it up, you'd be pretty happy, I think, if, if that happened. Uh, so oftentimes I heard that uh, Wag Daddy had to to carry a lot of water and uh, was thirsty sometimes when he would get to the next part, but it all worked out in the end. So let's do another one here. The area of Jasper National Park in Alberta, Canada. is about 10,878 square kilometers, which you can write like this. And we'll see the other way to write it in just a second. I bet you know it already. Maybe you forgot, so don't forget this though. Put a space in between instead of a comma for this chapter at least. So we're putting spaces, we're using the, uh, the way that the rest of the world writes their numbers, we're using that here. So what is this in square miles, which I can write like that. So I know a square mile is going to be bigger than a square kilometer because a mile itself is bigger than a kilometer. So this number should get smaller because I'm going to a unit that, that has more to it. Uh, you could say this is square mile is bigger in a square kilometer. So how can I change this? No different than what I've been doing. I'm going to take my original number, what I want to change. I can write square kilometers like that as well. 
let's make it a fraction, put it over 1. And now I'm trying to get rid of the square kilometers part and change it instead to square miles. So I want to write, I'm going to write kilometers squared again. And I'm going to put miles squared up here. And let's see, let's check our table and see what kind of conversion I have for that. So over here, is there a square miles to square kilometers conversion? Sure, it's one square mile to 2.6 square kilometers. Uh, so this is 2.6 kilometers squared. That would go on the bottom, one mile squared here. Uh, and then this would cancel out with this. At that point, you would just have on the top, you'd have 10,878 miles squared. On the bottom, you'd have 2.6. And so we work this out put that into a calculator you would end up getting 4,183.2 or sorry 0.85 miles squared we're not talking about significant digits at all here I'm not getting too concerned with that here uh, we could get into that kind of discussion later about should we really round off a little earlier or should we put these two digits uh, but again, we're not going to talk about that, so I'm not going to get too particular about significant digits. Uh, if you had something like this, or if we rounded it off, depending on where I would tell you to round it off, you round it off a little differently than that. Maybe this is the nearest square mile, you would say 4,184 then instead. Um, but this would be the, the, the answer I would want based on what they gave me here in this conversion table. So we're using this primarily or uh, completely with this chapter. And just a couple of quick points. Does it really look like this in Jasper National, National Park? Yes, I've had the extreme privilege to, uh, to visit Jasper National Park. Uh, this picture was one I actually took. Uh, I was ex just extraordinarily happy when I, I saw this picture in my LCD screen. Um, maybe definitely one of the, the best tech pictures I've ever been able to take. I think part of it was just a good camera and good lighting that day. Uh, this one I did not take though, pretty amazing picture right there too, but solid stuff like that all over the place in Jasper National Park. Jasper and Banff National Parks, Canadian Rockies, oh my goodness, so beautiful. Um, so let's do, do one here. Let's say you're on vacation in Mexico. This is Cancun. Uh, this is looks pretty amazing. I have not been to Cancun. I've not been to uh, some pyramids like this. I haven't really traveled too much in Mexico. I, I have been there a couple of times, or at least one time. Boy, I can't even remember. At least one time I was there. Uh, I'd like to go back again, though, and see some more stuff. So let's say you're on vacation in Mexico. Let's say you're vacationing in Cancun, and then you went out and did some sightseeing. So on vacation in Mexico, suppose... You pay 33 pesos, that's the currency in Mexico, pesos, whoa, pesos for 2.5 kilograms of, what are these guys down here? Some black beans, all right, so black beans. You might say at first initially, whoa, 33 pesos for that much. But well, we don't know really what pesos is in terms of dollars and kilograms. We have to think about, for us, we usually think about stuff in pounds. So we kind of have to, to change stuff into that so we're more familiar of what it would actually be. So here's the, the question. How many pesos to begin? Pesos per kilogram is this? That's my first question. And then a follow-up question. If the current exchange rates is one dollar, this is one US dollar, is equal to 13 pesos and I just actually looked this up today and it was very very close to that why do I keep putting a P E O I don't know why that keeps happening 
Uh, why am I inclined to do that? Not sure. So 13 pesos. What is the price of black beans? in dollars per pound. So a fair amount to write there. Our answer actually will probably take less writing than, than this itself. So what would you say in terms of pesos per kilogram? All you have to do is take your pesos and divide it by kilograms. When you see the word per, that means you should be dividing. So pesos per kilogram would be 33 pesos I just give up on that, boy. 33 pesos over 2.5 kilograms. If we divide that, we get 13.2 pesos. Aha, gotcha, gotcha, pesos. I wrote the S first, pesos per kilogram. And so, okay, that's a little more helpful, I think. It's that many pesos per kilogram, but I, again, I still want to think of this in dollars per pound. That's what I'm used to thinking of. That's how, I'm, that's how my mind works until I get a little more used to the metric system. I still have to think that way. And so let's, let's take this. This would be 13.2 pesos per one kilogram. It's that per just kilogram. It's the same thing as writing that. And we want to change this to dollars per pound. So I want to change pesos to dollars. How could I do that? I want to get rid of pesos now. Put pesos on the bottom. And what's the exchange rate? Well it's 1 to 13. So I would have 13 pesos here and I would have one dollar up here. And I'm going to write the dollar symbol there instead of writing the word dollars. That's fine to do that. And so I've got dollars now on the top. I want to do dollars per pound, dollars divided by pounds. So kilograms instead in terms of pounds. What is that? Go back to your conversion table. And one kilogram in terms of pounds or one pound in terms of kilograms. Let's see what they got down here. There is one pound is 0.45 kilograms. So we're going to use that as our value. One pound 0.45 kilograms. What goes on top? I see kilograms on the bottom. That's what I want to get rid of. So I'm going to put it on top. So if I put it on top, it'll cancel with kilograms on the bottom over here. That was 0.45 kilograms in one pound. So now I've got pounds on the bottom. I've got dollars on the top, just like I wanted. Multiply this out. You got 13.2 times 0.45. That is dollars on the top there. <coughs> and I'll write the word dollars now. So you can do it like this or you can do it like this. Either way is okay. And then you got 13 times 1 times 1 is still just 13 and then pounds on the bottom. LB is pound and then LBS stands for plural pounds. So let's take out my calculator again at this point. Clear that from before. And we got 13.2 times 0.45. That equals 5.94. So we did that first. And then now dividing that by 13, that equals it's about 0.46. So if we were saying this is this many dollars, so 0.46 dollars, 46 cents per pound to me. It sounds like an excellent price. Uh, so I feel like I got a pretty good deal. 0.46, unless beans are just ridiculously cheaper at another store in Mexico, this seems like a really good price to me. I would pay more than that uh, pretty much any grocery store that I think you could buy black beans at here in the, the States. Let's do another one now. So going to the Autobahn, this is in Germany. Autobahn is just like their interstate system basically. I used to think it was just like a single road that uh, there was only one autobahn that was 
in all of Germany, but the Autobahn is just like all the the interstate system, the whole interstate system essentially. But it's not an interstate system because it's not interstate. But they don't have separate states in the same sense that we have states. Uh, they do have separate. Uh, they might actually call them states. I don't. I don't know. So I would need to look that up. But they have their country, and then like like all the, the major highways, major freeways. You could say that's called the autobahn. Um, anyway, let me write down the question. So the speed limit. You may have heard before that there is no speed limit on the Autobahn, which is true a lot of the time, but in certain sections it is what you see here, 130, but this is not miles per hour, this is kilometers per hour. So the speed limit on many stretches of the Autobahn, this is how you spell that, Autobahn, like that, in Germany, is 130, and you can abbreviate kilometers per hour like that, it's 130 kilometers per hour. And my question to you, what is this in miles per hour? So MPH, what is that? miles per hour you could also write mi slash h that would also work uh, so what is this in miles per hour this should be a pretty simple problem actually so we take 130 kilometers per so divided by one hour we can think of it like that and again I want to change my units uh, so I should have a unit fraction in here I want to change to miles per hour instead of kilometers per hour so all I need to get rid of here is the kilometers. So I'm going to put kilometers on the bottom to get rid of the kilometers on the top there. And then up here would be miles instead. So what's the conversion? Let's go back to the table and let's see what we got. So we have miles to kilometers. That's up here. One mile, 1 1.6 kilometers. So here I'm going to put one mile, 1 1.6 kilometers. Multiply this out. I've got 130 in miles on the top. Now we got 1 times 1.6, this is just 1.6, that's hours. So we work this out in the calculator and we get 81.25 miles per hour. So you can put MI over H or you can put MPH for miles per hour. That's more what we're accustomed to, so I'm going to write it like that. So still pretty darn fast, even though they don't have a speed limit in certain sections when they do it's still still cruising right along uh, there are some other sections I was reading about the Autobahn a little more there's there are some around some larger cities where they slow it down for safety uh, a lot more than 130 but most stretches it's either 130 or there's no posted speed limit at all they can go as fast as they want uh, they're not gonna get as good gas mileage if they're doing that but they're gonna get there faster I guess so last example here you may know this guy if you're a Lakers fan. Uh, recently got traded to the Lakers. That's Dwight Howard right there. So let's use Dwight Howard in this last example. So suppose 12 milligrams of a drug is to be given for each kilogram. of body weight. So a nurse would do something like this all the time. They would be figuring out, okay, how much of this specific drug do I need to, to administer to this patient? Uh, if you're going into any kind of health careers related profession, you should know, you need to know how to do stuff like this. Uh, so very, very practical stuff here. So let's begin to reach kilogram of body weight if Dwight Howard so let's say he's one of our patients. Maybe we're the, the personal trainer for the Lakers. Uh, so if Dwight Howard weighs, and I'll look this up, it said he weighed 265 pounds. Uh, the guy's, I don't know if he's quite seven foot tall, but he's pretty darn close if he isn't seven foot tall. Uh, he weighs 265 pounds. What dosage?
of this drug should he receive? So to me, this sounds like I've got stuff in pounds that I need to change to kilograms. So I've got his weight that I should change to that. And then I'm going to need to figure out how much is that for each kilogram, 12 milligrams. So it's kind of like a, a multiplication thing. However many kilograms he's, he weighs, just multiply 12 by that to figure it out. So let's start off with what we got. Let's start off with 265 pounds is what we're given for Dwight. And now we're going to multiply this by, I want to get rid of pounds. So I want to take this and put pounds on the bottom, put kilograms on the top. What was the conversion again? If you forgot, go back to your table here. So conversion for kilograms to pounds, that's a weight or a mass type of thing. So one pound, 0.45 kilograms. So over here again, we got one pound. And put that on the bottom and 0.45 kilograms on the top because pounds and pounds will cancel this way leave me with kilograms like I wanted and now this is a unit fraction part this part though this is one the one instance here in this lesson where we're not going to make a unit fraction we're supposed to give Dwight 12 milligrams for each kilogram so this one's going to be 12 milligrams per one kilogram for each kilogram. And so I want you to make a little note here that this right here, what we just did here, this is not a unit fraction. This is the dosage per kilogram. And it's not a unit fraction. And so 12 milligrams, I know it doesn't equal one kilogram. That's meant to be in this one. So 12 milligrams per one kilogram. And so now doing this, this will give me the answer that I need. So 265 times 0.45 times 12. This is a step you could leave out later, but please write it down now. Uh, so you could just do this in the calculator all at once later on. And then here are kilograms, canceling with kilograms down there. This would be milligrams there and then on the bottom you're just going to have a one so everything else canceled out so I just need to put that into a calculator I've done that already this gave me 1431 just double check that for me with your calculator remember if you ever catch a mistake in one of these lecture videos before I fix it you are going to earn yourself some uh, some bonus points if you tell me before anybody else does so 1,431 milligrams, or if you change that to grams, move the decimal three spots to get to grams, that would be 1.431 grams of the drug. So that's how much should be administered to this big fella right here, this giant of a man, Dwight Howard. And that is our last example, but I want to just say, mention one other thing. So We've talked about volume, we've talked about length, and we've talked about mass, and we've talked about temperature. These are actually the seven base units. So we've talked about there being like three or four that we're learning uh, basically, but the actual base units, it's a meter, it's a second for time. This is the same for from SI to, uh, for SI and for the US customary. Some of these are the same, so time is the same. Electric current, I believe, is the same as well. This luminous, intensity candela kelvin is the same as celsius more or less uh, but it just starts earlier it's based on absolute zero and then for mass they have the base unit in a sense is a kilogram because the kilogram it's this cylinder this is the only this is interesting to me that the kilogram is the only one that's not based on <coughs> on uh, something that's just kind of natural and and just shows up in nature they have an actual weight or an actual thing that uh, has a mass of one kilogram that is stored in this International Bureau of Weights and Measures in France. Uh, so that's the only one that they don't have something in nature where they can say that's always a kilogram. And then the mole, if you've done chemistry, you've learned stuff about moles. 
Um, so there's some interesting stuff here. I would recommend reading that. Uh, I'm not going to test you on that stuff, but very interesting things there. Page 465, if you if you want to read that. You don't have to write any of that down, uh, but you did have to have all these examples down. Hopefully you found all those helpful in tackling your problems that you'll have to do yourself. Uh, let me know if you have questions, and yeah, we will check this out, this picture out a little later. And oh, Sheriff, hey, how you doing? He's back. I guess he wants to give you a final word. Uh, yep, you're on, Sheriff. Good luck, kids. I hope you learned something.